Hello everybody, you're listening to the Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. This is the weekly radio show where we chat about the local arts news, we have a different guest on each week, we head over to the Rye Light Zone for a short story and or some poetry, and we catch up with Tangler Jack Ford over in the Oak Shed for a weekly album review. As always, you can reach out to me here at the studio by dropping me an email on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk And I'm particularly keen to hear from poets, performers, musicians, people with MP3s to share, anyone who anything they would like to say or to share with me do get in touch I'm particularly looking for uh, new guests uh, I will put a shout out here as well we're also looking to chat to previous guests who've uh, where it's been at least a year since they came on the show uh, just to give us a bit of an update on what they've been up to since we last talked to them um, that actually brings me up to something that I wanted to chat about quickly so I've dropped the ball a little bit we've done a few repeats over the last few weeks uh, just while I've been gathering new material we do have at least I think three interviews now recorded ready for new shows and as I say I've been chatting to previous guests so for the previous guests what we're going to do is we are going to have shows where we uh, catch up with three different previous guests uh, and they have about 10 minutes each just to let us know what they've been up to since we last chatted to them. Um, we're also obviously repeating previous episodes as needed just to fill in the gaps uh, because I've been struggling to find guests. So again, if you want to be on the show, reach out to me and get in touch. You can also find us on Facebook. If you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound, you should be able to find us. Uh, and we are repeating on Wickham Sound on Monday nights. We're on the Wickham Sound Listen Again, iTunes, Spotify and wherever else you get your podcasts. So this week we're going to be chatting to Luna Seas, uh, which is a local local band um, who've released their first EP actually after uh, after 10 years of hard graft. But before we do that, we're going to head over to the Rye Light Zone, and we're going to hear from uh, Lauren Carey Wern. Where I can't, I don't know. I've only seen it written down. Lauren, and then her surname is spelled C-A-R-E-Y hyphen W-E-A-R-N. Um, she reached out to me. Um, and I, I'm just going to read what you said, what she said to me, and then we'll we'll check out her poem. So she said, "Hi, I'm Laurie. I'm a 20-year-old published author and artist living in Portsmouth, South Sea. I'd love the opportunity for my audio reading of my poem Anxiety from my published poetry book Quiet Girl, Loud Mind to be featured on your radio. My poetry book is about my experience with social anxiety and healing from past relationships, and my hope is for people who have anxiety or feel similarly to know they're not alone. My book Quiet Girl, Loud Mind was self-published last year in August with Tricorn Books." I published my first short story, Yellow Rose, with a queer small press when I was 18 years old. I started writing poetry during lockdown, and writing really helped me when I was going through a hard time, and hope it will help those who read my work too. I look forward to hearing from you. Kind regards, Laurie. And as somebody who suffers from anxiety myself, I thought it would be a good shout to uh, to air her poem. So here we have, um, oh God, I've got to try and say her name again. Uh, Lauren Carey Wern with her poem, Anxiety. Hi, my name is C.W. Laurie. I am a 20-year-old published author and I recently published a poetry book called Quiet Girl Loud Mind which is a collection of poems from my loud mind that will surprise many people who see me as the quiet girl who doesn't like to speak. Spoken from both my mind and heart these poems are my raw emotional feelings about the words inside of me and my struggle with the world around me as well as my feelings about love and relationships. My hope is that others who are experiencing similar feelings of anxiety, insecurity and love in this modern world will be able to relate to my poetry and feel less isolated and alone. I would like to read a poem from my book called Anxiety. I'm scared of talking to people. I've never been good at it. I speak my name. In my head I am screaming it. They do not hear me. I look down at the floor avoiding their stare, muttering to myself, why would they care? I practice conversations in my head, memorising each line like a script. Sometimes I forget the lines. I black out. I escape to another reality in my mind. I've been quiet for so long, sometimes I can't find the words I am searching to find. I'm used to people's ignorance when they ask, why don't you speak? Society rejects me. I do not want to fit in. And that poem specifically is about my struggle with social anxiety. And I hope anyone listening to this who also has anxiety knows that they are not alone. That was Anxiety by Lauren Carey Wern by, uh, for this week's entry into the Rye Light Zone. You're listening to The Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and this is Just Brind with his cover of Eastbound and Down by Jerry Reed. Eastbound and Down, loaded up. 
Turned up and trucking. We're gonna do what they say can't be done. It can't be done. We got a long way to go. In a short time to get there. Or I'm eastbound. Just watch your bandit run. Two, three, four. Eastbound and down. Loaded up and trucking. We're gonna do what they say can't be done. We got a long way to go. In a short time to get there, why me smell just what you bound to burn? Keep your foot hard on the pedal, so never mind them brakes. Let it all hang out, cause we gotta burn the main. The boys are thirsty in Atlanta, and there's beer in Texarkana. And we'll bring it back no matter what it takes. He's bound down, loaded up and truck him. We gonna do what they say can't be done. Can't be done. We, we got, got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Why be found Just watch your band here burn. Come on, help me talk.
That was Aphasia Majora by Luna Seas, and before that we had Just Bryn with his cover of Eastbound and Down by Jerry Reed. You're listening to The Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it's time for us to be joined now in conversation by this week's guest, which is the band Luna Seas. I start with my, my traditional first question is, uh, what was the last book that you read, and what did you think of it? So, uh, And you are allowed to have not read anything recently as well, but over to you guys. I'll go first then. Um, the- the last book I read was uh, it's a book called uh, Un- Unwritten Unseen or something. That's pretty good, isn't it? Um, I can't <laughs> the book now. <laughs> <laughs> is it about? Uh, it's about uh, an imagined series of meetings between Sid Barrett and Nick Drake. And I can't remember what it's called. Um, by Robert Chapman. Yeah, it's really good, but I can't, I can't remember the title now. It's something like Unseen, Unsaid, or Unwritten. Cool. I think, I think mine was, it was a Disney villain book about Mother Gothel and her um, her life story, which was really good. So it was a lot of witches and dark things and zombies and stuff. So that was quite cool. Well, I'm going to have to confess, I can't remember the last time I read a book, um, probably when I went on holiday, and that was a long time ago too, but um, I'm studying at the moment as well as working, so um, I've been doing a lot of reading of research papers, which is quite hard going. The title was Unsung, Unsaid, Sid and Nick in Absentia, so I've just had to look it up. You were close. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and a good mix there, cool. Awesome, well, obviously today I want to chat to you about Lunar Season. I I wondered if you could start with letting us know who's in the band and what do they do? Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm Amy and I am on the vocals. I'm Joe and I'm on keys and vocals. Uh, I'm Mark and I do everything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> and well, I, and I wanted to ask you guys, where does the name come from? Um, that has to go to Mark, I think. You thought of that, didn't you? I mean, it was a long, to long time ago. Just a play on the word lunacy. Um, yeah, we're all a bit mad. So lunacy, yeah, that and that became lunacies. Um, yeah, that's it. Cool. Well, and so, you, I was going to say you you mentioned there that it, you know it was a long time ago, and I read on your social media, I think it is that uh, you you put in ten years of passion, love, and dedication into creating the album. What can you tell us about? that journey over those 10 years how did it all start and uh you know what transpired over those 10 years that led up to this this album yeah or do you want to go for amy no go on joe (laughs) um so um mark and i actually knew each other from college years ago um but um mark and amy were introduced to a mutual friend and wanted to work together and mark got in touch with me saying um, I know you're probably busy in another band, but uh, I don't suppose you fancy kind of meeting up, playing some keys and just seeing where maybe this can go. Um, and I'd actually just finished with another band at that point. And so that's sort of how it came to be. Um, and initially it was just about exploring kind of music, trying to find our sound and kind of what we wanted to write together. Um, but you've got to throw some life events in there and a pandemic and, you know, the fact we don't live near each other. And so um, that's why these things take time. Um, But yeah, it's, I think you need that time to develop a sound as a band and and be cohesive, but also when you're working full time and and living apart, it's, it's a difficult thing to fit in as well. Yeah. But worth it. Mm. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> well, and you you mentioned your sound. How would you guys define your sound or describe it? We thought about this, haven't we? And we were like, oh, we're not, yeah, alternative. I think um, it's always difficult. I prefer to throw that back to people who are listening to see what they say, because when you're immersed in it, it's difficult to kind of step out of it and look at it, um, you know, without being biased in any way. But I would say that the album that we've produced is very atmospheric um, and that's something that a lot of people have said that have listened to it. So I'd say when we've got the the time to put into developing an album, it's about that atmospheric 
can big sound, but obviously live um, would be would be different because there's just three of us. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, and uh, in terms of playing live, like, what are some of your favourite venues that you played at throughout the years? Wickham Art Centre is probably the one we've played at the most, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're always amazing, aren't they? Um. We played the Phoenix Club a while back. Mm. Um, and because we've played in other bands, we've played other venues too, but um, mm. we wanted to focus on our writing. Um, but yeah, gigging is sort of the next thing we want to look at and see how we can adapt a three piece with the sound we've got on the album and, and how we can do a, a, an alternative arrangement of that in a live setting. That's something yeah. I think we want to look at next and, and then where to play. And Wickham Art Centre is definitely, definitely up there because they've been so supportive of yeah. us before. Well, and as you say, I suppose with you not living, you know, um, like next door to each other or whatever, it's, it's that adds a new element of, uh, you know, a new element of challenge to it as well. Um, so how does the how did the sort of the songwriting process like what does it look like for you? Do you sort of develop things individually and bring them all together? Um, how do, how do your songs come about? Um, so I think we kind of start with um, music musically, really, don't we? Um, just have a bit of a jam session, um, and then there's been a few that um, Joe and Mark have done previously um, that have come come in and then we've sort of grown them um and added and changed things and sort of put a spin on a spin on it as as the three of us um and then yeah an organic process isn't it we, we, yeah we come up with little ideas and then play around with it and see what we can turn it into um and give it you know make it part of our sound You'd be amazed how many uh, short recordings Mark's got where it's idea one, idea two, idea three, um, because sometimes we have lots of ideas and we just want to get them down and then we then go back to them and, and kind of develop them from there. Yeah, cool. Makes sense. So your your new album is called uh, The Darkness and the Light. What can you tell us about that uh, album? Do you want to take this one, Mark? You can say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was the the whole al album, I suppose, is, is about balance, isn't it? With um, the darkness and the light, the, there are um, some quite fun songs. There's quite intense songs, um, up tempo, really quiet. It's it's uh, yeah, the, so the balance and the contrast between the two. Um, it's something, yeah, it's something we try to reflect throughout the album. Well, and I'm just thinking now, I'm just, just bringing it back up so I can see here, but because it's almost like, um, yeah, like to, to me, it kind of, it's like a throwback to the, you know, the vinyl days where you have side A and side B, right? So is, is that what, you know, did you have side A is darkness, side B is light? And is that something you set out to do from the beginning? Or again, was it one of those things that just organically came about? Um. I th I think um, it came around organically, but then the the nearer the end we got, it became quite apparent um, that it it should be for vinyl in an ideal world that you know we would put it onto vinyl ourselves. But um, and that's maybe the next thing we we'll look to in the future get enough people that like it to want to get it pressed. Um, but I think Mark was the one who sort of brought that to our attention kind of first off and we thought that was a really nice idea um you know and uh the darkness and the light it sort of starts i suppose darker on the first side and then lighter on the second but by the end of the second side there there's sort of an undercurrent to it um through all the songs really but particularly mm. towards the end of the second side so you can almost just play it round on a loop yeah to bring yeah. it round Cool. Yeah. I mean, it makes me think of, you know, the Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail. And I suppose like, you know, because you can play a bit with the, this different kind of in a, uh, imagery. So like another thing I, I really like is uh, on the album art, obviously, you've got the moon and then you've got the yin and yang on the moon as well. So it's quite cool how you managed to, I suppose, reflect the 
the kind of musicality of it with the the visual elements as well um and so it's up on uh band camp is probably the best place for people to get it i i think is that right yeah 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 and there are some uh, a few little extra bits and bobs they get if they if if they get it from bandcamp as well is that right if they are very kind to download um they'll get a digital booklet which has got some further artwork that mark pulled together um so mark can sort of tell you a little bit more about that but it also has the lyrics um and just a, a bit more information really about us and the dedications for the album um, and some thank yous, the usual kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a great platform. And, um, you know, the streaming is just to kind of get people to hear it and, yeah. you know, and hopefully get on board. And um, But buying it definitely helps the uh, us musicians out there that are sort of almost starting their journey, getting their music out on the platform for hopefully the world to hear. You're listening to The Archer on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. I'm here in conversation with Luna Seas, and this is Luna Seas with My Own Little Hell.
That was my own little hell by Lunacies. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and I'm here in conversation with the band themselves, Lunacies. Did you want to tell us a little bit about, about those that artwork, Mark? Uh, it was, so it was, I was just trying to get pictures of the, the Winter Triangle uh, and for the three stars to basically sort of represent the three members of the band. Um, and then the, I say, the moon image. I'd, cap, I'd, I'd taken a picture of the moon years and years ago. And then just had this idea of a, of the yin and yang in it, which would represent or reflect the album, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but it was very much always we. It was supposed. It's supposed to be as an album. Um, I read or heard an interview a few years ago about how no one releases albums anymore. Well, no one writes albums. They release albums. They don't write yeah. albums. Um, it's they're just collections of songs. And I don't think we we wanted to do something that was a bit more of a, a cohesive whole. Yeah. Uh, that had a, a start, a middle, and an end, um, and then the the idea of the the album as a concept, the old vinyl, where you would have side A and then you would have to have a break and then listen to side B. Um, we sort of decided, tried to build that in into a digital download version. Yeah, um, get a little interval in the middle. Cool. Well, and it's making me think as well. Um, like I suppose numbers have been quite significant as well. So you, again, you've got the two sides of the album, you've got the three members of the band. And what I quite liked, so you released it on April the 24th, 2024. So it was 24, what is it? 3404, no, 2024. It's all the twos <laughs> and the O's and the two fours anyway. I can't, can't, can't yeah. like visualize in my head which order they come in. Um, but I thought that was cool. And, you know, as I say, so it's, it came out on April 24th. So that's, I mean, about three weeks ago at the time of recording. What what what's the response been to it over those three weeks from people who've checked it out? It was full moon as well that day. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it came together. Yeah, I've had some um sorry Joe. <laughs> I've had some lovely um feedback from sort of friends, family, um, people that have listened to it. Um and a couple of um people have said it's very euphoric. Um and they've really enjoyed sort of having it either sort of blasting in their car and listening to it or having it as background music it sort of gives um that kind of vibe for whatever you want want it for really um so yeah really good feedback yeah um similar um response for people i've spoken to um there's also been a few sort of saying that they've maybe heard a pink floyd influence which isn't a surprise because mark's definitely a huge fan um and so are we but mark is huge fan um and cranberries or another band there's been um sort of reference to um yeah so it's and also driving in the car with it has been said and and i think the milder sound of the deaf tones has been mentioned by someone as well so there's quite an eclectic mix of feedback um but we're still early days on getting that from people so just looking forward to having more people hear it and and sort of let us know what they think of it really cool yeah i mean it's funny you mentioned the, the pink floyd influence and um when you were talking about it being more of a something that's constructed deliberately as an album i mean for me the first thing that comes into my mind is dark side of the moon um and then you got the moon and the moon as well so it's it's kind of funny how they all kind of you know it all comes full circle um, so I wanted to ask you, you, you mentioned on, uh, again, I think this is on your social media bios that, uh, it says you write your own songs, love cats and like pizza. So I want to ask you a question about each of those three. Um, well, we've, we've kind of already covered the songwriting, the songwriting process, um, which was what I was going to ask you there. But with that said, what is it about writing your own songs versus, you know, performing covers, you know, playing Pink Floyd covers, uh, that attracts you? to to the act of creation and writing original material i think it's a compulsion that you if you're a creative person you you sort of don't have a choice you just mm -hmm. want to create um and i love all those you know pink floyd beatles Jimi hendrix love all that love music in general um love the opportunity to play music whenever possible but there's something about wanting to create something um mm -hmm. that's it almost indescribable you're just you're just compelled to do it mm. yeah I, I feel the same way there it's it feels i always say it feels like music's in my bones it's yeah. 
it's a really big part of me and how I identify as a person. It's a major, major thing in my life, really. Um, and I love listening to it. I love supporting other people. Um, but yeah, as Mark said, there's a compulsion to write. It feels like there's something in you and you, you have to let that out. And the way I do that is through music. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, very, very similar to, to you guys. Um, and there's just that um, that feeling when you've sort of, you've done it and there's that finished piece and it's just that recent feeling where you're just like, oh, I've done that. Like, you know, that's come from me and my, you know, whatever's going on at the time. And it's just, just such a big outlet to be able to get it out in your own words and your own way as well. Yeah, cool. And so obviously you guys love cats. Uh, who are some of your 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 favourite feline friends that you're the closest to? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all got cats, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I've got um, a cat called Millie. Uh, she's a rescue cat. Uh, we've had her 10 years. Um, I was always a dog person, still am. But since having Millie, I've totally become in love with cats. Yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah, I've got two cats as well, uh, Hendrix and Luna, um, and they're also both rescue cats. Um, and yeah, I just love cats. Yeah, I've got two. Yeah, <laughs> I've got two, Evie and Etta. Um, and yeah, oh, just I love again. I love dogs as well. I love all animals, but cats. I feel like I understand more. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> cool and. Um... You like pizza? What's your what's your go to pizza order? This could be contentious. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on my mood. <laughs> uh, it could be a pepperoni passion, or I might be having a veggie. Just go for like a completely covered in veg. Um, one or the other, usually. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely chicken and mushroom, but stuffed crust. Good answer. Mm. So I just love cheese. So any pizza is 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 pretty much a good pizza. Um, but I, and and Joe is going to be upset by this. But I do like Hawaiian, and I don't care. Joe, pineapple is allowed on pizza. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're right. It. We're opening a can of worms there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the pineapple debate. It's best not to get into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, I've just got a couple more questions just to end on, really. Um, one of them is, again, your 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 journey's taken you over this sort of 10 year period. And I saw at one point uh, and an, one of Ozzy Osbourne's guitars came into your story. Can you can you tell us how that happened? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so that was um, uh, my dad has got motor neurone disease. Um, and uh the guitar was for was donated by Ozzy Osbourne for uh Butterfly House uh hospice um who looked after my dad. Um so we did I was, uh, the school I was working in at the time we were we we put on a concert um and then did an auction where we auctioned off this Ozzy Osbourne guitar um and raised we think we raised about two thousand pounds in, in the end mm. over the whole event. Um uh yeah, to, for 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 Butterfly House, who are amazing, amazing uh, place. Awesome, cool. Um, and obviously, this might be a bit premature to ask this one because you've only just released this album. But have you put any thought into your next album? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because because yeah. we had um, we had so many um, so many tracks under our belt. Um, We've yeah, I think Mark's put together sort of a, a a suggested second second one, haven't you? Yeah. But they're all they're ideas. They're not all finished, but they we've got the the basic idea, the outline mm -hmm. for another album. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, and and that leads me nicely into just the the final point. It's technically two questions in one, but you know what's next for you guys, and where can people follow you to stay in touch and find out more? Well, you guys are the social media people, so you do the you thing. All right. Well, we're on Facebook and Instagram. 
Um, obviously, uh, lunacies.bandcamp.com as well if you want to check out the album, which would be great. Um, but there are ways to contact us via um, all of those platforms. So uh, yeah, we're not on Twitter yet. I'm not sure if we will go on there. Well, it's no longer Twitter, is it? It's called no, something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. And I guess, um, yeah, what's next for you guys? Are you planning on, uh, I, I suppose you kind of hinted it, you're hoping to get some live shows un under your belt. Um, I guess it's that and promoting the album and maybe working on the, the follow-up. Yeah, hit the nail on the head, Dane, there, actually. Yeah, all of those. <laughs> I'm not sure how we're going to fit it all in, but we are. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Big thank you to Lunacies for joining me. You're listening to The Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and this is Lunacies with Under House Arrest.
was Saturday Night by Maz Manzini, and before that we had Under House Arrest by Luna Seas. You're listening to The Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it's time for us to head over to the York Shed now to catch up with Twanglin' Jack Ford for this week's album review. The smile, a light for attracting attention. I bought this CD as a present to myself for Christmas 2023. The smile of Tom York and Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead, along with a drummer that I've never heard of but I think he might be well known amongst the youngsters. I became interested in them when I found a concert on Sky Arts. I was amazed at the sound being created by just the three of them, with Greenwood and York each playing guitars, basses and keyboards. I was particularly amazed by Tom York's ability to sing while playing very complicated bass lines and by Johnny Greenwood's precisely mechanically repeated strange electric guitar arpeggios that sound like sequenced synths. OK Computer by Radiohead was for a while my all-time favourite album. I loved that half of it seemed to me to be a summary of all the great music I had loved up to that point. Prog and punk, jangly and brutal, classical and avant-garde. And the other half of the album was something uniquely Radiohead. I also liked the follow-up album Kid A, but I did not love it like I loved OK Computer. After that, there was still plenty that I liked about Radiohead. In fact, the Pyramid song is one of my all-time favourite of their songs. However, I found the reimagining of great music from the past to be much less apparent, and that the biggest influence on what Radiohead were doing seemed to be Radiohead. I think I expected the smile to be Tom York's acoustic strumming with bobble-headed scat and castrato, and Johnny Greenwood sitting on the floor playing with his pedals while detuning an old transistor radio. But I was wrong, there are songs on this that sound like my favourite bits of Radiohead, like Karma Police and Pyramid Song. And there are songs that have parts that remind me of others of my favourite artists, like Philip Glass, Lee Scratch Perry, Pixies, Neil Young and Van Gelis. I like the way it is quite varied, like there is no concept or overruling musical doctrine to it. Johnny Greenwood can take an unharmonious congregation of notes that do not sound like they were made by any kind of musical instrument and create something that may or may not be musical but is often breathtakingly beautiful. He has written music for films using these kind of sound textures. He's also a master of modern harmony, but nothing ever seems to be gratuitously showy-offy. They are masters at creating arpeggios and chord progressions, with unusual sounds in uncomfortable and undanceable time signatures that then resolve in the most satisfying and emotionally fulfilling way. Tom can write great songs in a conventional manner, And Johnny is masterful at orchestration, and so you get a song like Free in the Knowledge, which is so beautiful it may end up being one of my all-time favourite songs. The Smile, a light for attracting attention. Big thank you to Twanglin' Jack Ford for this week's album review. Thank you to Luna Seas for being this week's guest. Thank you to everyone whose music I've shared. Thank you to Lauren Carey Wern for the poetry. As always, you can reach out to me here at the studio on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk. And I'm particularly keen to hear from poets, performers, musicians, people with MP3s to share local arts news. Don't hesitate to get in touch. You can also find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound. And we are repeat on Wickham Sound on Monday nights or on the Wickham Sound Listen Again, iTunes, Spotify and wherever else you get your podcasts. So I'm going to leave you with one last tune. This is Umar Ara with Live Our Dreams. I'll catch you next week. Mm-hmm.